this one. Yeah, okay. So yes, now our next speaker today is uh, Yun Chen Wei from the University of British Columbia, who will give a talk on bounded Morse index solutions of Allen Kahn equations on surfaces. Thank you, Yun Chen, please. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, thank you, Boyan, for the introduction. And uh, I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to attend this uh, high level conference in honor of uh, Nadia Enskai. And uh, I, I have never met Nadia Enskai, but I think everyone in PD must have read her book. This uh, book on course and linear uh, elliptic equations. And uh, this, is, uh, this book has been uh, uh, translated in Chinese. And uh, so I read that book in Chinese. And uh, it's, uh, so in some sense, we were all students of uh, Nadia Enskai. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about some joint work with uh, Yong Liu and Frank Parker and my student here on uh, bounded most index solutions for Kang on surfaces. So uh, I'm going to uh, divide my talk in three parts. First part, I give a general uh, introduction to the Hutchison Tanagara theory, and then recent result of a childish uh, mentalities on surfaces. And by the way, if you have any question, please stop me anytime. And in the second part, I will discuss uh, the geodesicness with geodesic with Corson. And in the third part, I will discuss geodesics with, with higher multiplicity. All right. So I start with the Anakan equation, which is a very simple equation. It's minus Napa theory equals u minus u cubed. And, uh, and uh, so this nonlinearity is very simple. It has a two, uh, zero, three zeros, minus one, zero, and a one. Now, uh, if we consider the energy functional, the energy function is very, formally is very simple. So it's a uh, gradient U square. And this W, uh, this uh, potential has a two minimum, which is minus one and a plus one. And they have the same uh, 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 depth. Okay. So this is called a double world potential. So, uh, so most of my talk, uh, so, so minus one plus one are, are two phases. So most of the results I'm gonna to present today are true for any double world potential, okay? But as we're gonna see later uh, in the talk, some double world potential is better than others, uh, okay? So I will mention what, what are the good double world potential. So as we well know, this problem has a deep connection with the minimum surface. For example, this is related to the George conjecture. And, uh, and uh, if we we'll scale the problem uh, in a bounded domain, so then uh, we know local minimizers of the energy functional approach to a minimum surface. Uh, so this is uh, the more famous uh, result of Monica, Motorola, gamma convergence. And then you can get a C1 alpha estimate and the quantitization and, uh, and the C2 alpha estimate. So, so there are lots of work concerning the, the, the limit from when Ipsum go to zero. Now, uh, recently there is a renewed interest in building minimax theory with minimax theory of Kang and the corresponding for uh, minimum surface. So for example, uh, Garako, uh, uh, develop a minimized theory for Allen Kahn equation in analog to the minimized embedded minimum surface by Marcus and Ephes. And the Gasper and the Garako, they uh, uh, found the wire law for the density of the minimum surface. This is in analog to wire law for, uh, for the volume spectrum of uh, Nicomo, uh, Big and the Marcus and Ephes. And Chartish and Mantanidis use Allen Kahn and to prove the multiplicity one conjecture for minimum surface in R3. And the uh, recent result by day uh, uh, from the equi equi equivalence of uh, uh, angle and piece theory and the uh, Lustenic and the Shannon minimax theory of Anikon. So, and uh, the most recent result is Childish and the Martinides use Anikon uh, to uh, compute the P width of S2. So this is a very nice result. I am going to mention one of the key 
elements in this proof. Okay. Okay. So this is a general introduction of uh, Anacom with the minimum surface. So now let me go to the talk, of, uh, talk today. So I start with the so-called uh, hutchison tanegara uh, theory. So the general theory of a uh, hutchison tanegara is the following. Suppose we have a sequence of Anacom equation on a Riemannian manifold, okay? And uh, uh, with this scaling, and with a bounded energy, so the energy is a bounded. Then Hutchison and Tanigara uh, prove that uh, for the nodal set, you can naturally associate a so-called virevolt, okay, n minus one uh, virevolt with the integral density. And so this is the so-called Hutchison Tanigara quantization result. So roughly speaking, one can define a generalized mean capture and the station five water implies the general mean capture conserved. So, so this is a general theory and, uh, and the five water can be verified for its, okay? And in addition, if we assume that the solution is uh, stable, then uh, you can show that uh, uh, the five water is a smooth station minimum surface uh, of a core dimension seven with a core dimension seven single step. Now in two dimension, Tanagara showed that the five volt is a smooth geodesis away from isolated points. So, and this is the, uh, we are going to study the, the um, we're going to study the Anacom equation on surfaces. So, so now even with this information, the, the station revival can be very complicated. Now, even on surfaces. So for example, uh, you can have like triple junctions, right? You can have triple junctions and you can have uh, coarsen, right? And you can have, for example, quadruple junctions, right? And, and all this can happen for the, for the, for the uh, station five volt. And if you, uh, uh, Impose some uh, 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 quant some uh, density on each of the geodesics, and then uh, this will be uh, I uh, you can define generalized mean curvature, and this will be a, a station of my five volt. Okay, so this is a this is a general theory of uh, uh, Tanegawa and uh, Hutchison. Now, what I want to discuss today, as I wrote in this red line here is that for some special unknown, some of these phenomena will not happen. For example, the triple junction will not happen. And this quadruple junction, this type of quadruple junction will not happen. Okay, this is what, I, this is the result I'm going to uh, uh, discuss now. So the, what I want to discuss is the complete classification of stationary five volt on the surfaces. And uh, so we, by the result of Wang and myself, we know that the final mass index implies finite end and the implies finite energy. So, so, uh, so we're now classifying bounded mass index notion of Anacom's equation on surfaces. Okay, so now, now let me now start with the result of uh, Chodesh and uh, uh, Mantonidis. Right? Okay, uh, so in this uh, uh, preprint in the uh, uh, posting on uh, uh, 2021, so they, what they found is the uh, following. So uh, suppose we start with a uh, close uh, uh, on Rima surface. Uh, instead of taking the usual Anacom, now, if we take the sign Gordon on the count, now this is a special double well potential, which is one plus uh, cos and pi. Now, if we start with the sign Gordon and let u be u epsilon be a sequence of uh, bounded solutions uh, for sign Gordon with the bounded mass index and the bounded energy, then what they show that uh, the limit the variable, the stationary, the integral one variable is very simple. 
uh, is much simpler. It will be just geodesic mass and with we base some multiplicity. So, so as I said, so for example, this cannot happen by the result of childish and mantelitis. This cannot happen. And only this will happen. So the, the geodesics will cross each other, okay? And uh, uh, so they cross each other smoothly. And this cannot happen. So this is the, uh, uh, Childers and Mantanitis result. So with this result, now the stationary one uh, integral one variable is much simpler. So either you have cos geodesic net or you have a multiplicity, okay? So, so uh, I just show you another three examples. For example, this kind of uh, uh, a variable will not be possible. It will not be a limit of a sine god uh, 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 double work potential. And this cannot happen. And this may be possible, right? This, because these are the geodesic nets. Right? So, so, uh, uh, so this is the uh, uh, Charles Amatelitis. Okay. So the consequence of uh, Charles Amatelitis theorem says that the station one D variable arising from the sine golden double world potential can only have two possibilities. So I or what you get is with a higher multiplicity. So, so, so this is a geodesic with multiplicity one, right? This is a geodesic net. So you have two geodesics and they cross each other. So this is all, this is possible. And you can also have a multiplicity uh, two geodesics and you can have geodesic net with multiplicity two, right? So these are the possibilities uh, uh, of the integral uh, variable. Okay, from the Allen Kahn. Now, in the general theory of uh, Tanigawa and uh, Hutchison, uh, this, okay, the, the others, they cannot exclude. But with the sine Gordon, they can exclude the other strange cases. And these are the only, these are the possibility, okay, for the integral one variable. So, what I want to discuss today is how do we uh, construct solutions with Joseph's net, analyze the Joseph's net, and analyze the solutions with multiplicity two and the bounded index, bounded Morse index. So this is what we're going to, uh, I'm going to discuss today. Uh, two cases, Joseph's net and the multiplicity two. And the, and the first question uh, uh, you may ask is why sine Gordon? Okay. Uh, why sine? So, uh, by the result of uh, 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 Chaudhary and Mantelidis, uh, we only have two cases to consider. The first case is the cosine, the Joseph's net, the cross. Okay, and and uh, so how do we analyze this kind of solution? Okay, so this is the first case, and uh, this is the first part I'm going to discuss: the the cosine, Joseph's cosine. Uh, the second part we're going to discuss is geodesic collapse, so multiplicity. So two geodesics, they collapse because of the Allen Kahn and the collapse. How do we analyze this, this uh, collapse? Okay. So crossing and collapse, this is what uh, we're going to discuss now. Okay, so. Uh, so this is the first part. Now in the second part, uh, I'm going to discuss the Jesus and that, okay? Uh, the first difficulty. So according to uh, 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 Charles and and uh, uh, the geodesis, they will cross, okay? And they will form a geodesis, so to form a Jesus and that, okay? So the geodesis will just simply cross each other. Now, so when geodesis is called, so if you have simple geodesis, then the Allen count is very simple. You just use Allen count, you can approximate. Now when they cross, what happens? 
What happened to other count? Okay, so when the cross, they don't really cross. If it's in the limit, they cross. But if we blob at the at the crossing, what you really see is is see you're going to see this picture. You can see that they 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 almost they don't they almost uh, you're going to see this kind of uh, 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 hyperbola, kind of this picture. And if we bluff furthermore, this part, what you're going to see is a four-ended solution for Allen Kang. Okay, so let me just repeat. So this is as if some go to zero. This is the limit. The limit is the geodesic net. Okay, and they cross each other. Now, if we blop at this point, the crossing, and what we're going to see is a, a four-ended solution for the Allen Kang. Okay, now if you have three geodesics they cross, if three geodesics they cross, and you blob at this place with the crossing, and what you're going to see is a six end solution. You're going to see six end solution of the Allen Kang. Okay, so this, this brings about the cost. What about uh, multiple end solution of Allen Kang? So, so uh, by, by result of one and myself, we know that the final mode synthesis implies final end. So, so, uh, so, so find the end solution for, uh, for the, the, outcome, the set of uh, final end solution outcome would de denote M to N. And so far, we know very little about this M to N, the final end solution. And for, and a complete classification of finite uh, end solution is, is uh, already almost out of reach. For example, whether or not the finite end solutions are uh, uh, this uh, uh, connected, uh, the dimension, and the Morse index, and so on. So, so for the Allen Kang, this is completely open. But if we change the now the reality Allen Kang to sign Gordon, it turns out that we can answer these questions completely. Okay. So, so what is initial sign Gordon? Initial sign Gordon is you change u minus u cube to sign uh, pi times u. So uh, if you change, this is a double word potential. And with this double word, this is a double word potential. And and for this double word potential, and and using using the integral system theory, it turns out that we can write down all solutions to this problem with a finite end. Excuse me, Professor Ray. Uh, why yeah. uh, is the potential? Why is it uh, uh, pi squared in uh, the? Oh uh, uh, yeah, this is just a scaling. You just yeah, you don't need a pi squared. Um, okay. Yeah, you don't need a pi square. Yeah. Or actually, just a pi because the derivative will be a sine pi. Actually, you just a pi. Yeah. So for this initial sine Gordon, uh, you can write down all solutions. For example, you can write down the four ended solutions, okay, uh, and explicitly. And in general, a uh, two uh, two m and ended solutions and can be written uh, in this form, uh, in the similar form. And all solutions, the two and ended solutions are this type. So you, can, you can write on these solutions explicitly. And like this Allen Kahn, Allen Kahn you cannot do, okay, you, it's u minus u cube. But for sine pi u, you can write on all solutions explicitly. And, and as a result, uh, we can now have a complete classification of two and ended solutions for the sine Gordon equation. For example, we know that the two and ended solutions, the dimension is, is 2n and is a smooth conducting manifold, and they're all non degenerate. And we know the exact Morse index uh, for, uh, for each 
uh, to an ended solution. So, so, and furthermore, uh, the two ended solutions, if you look at the each end, and the each end we have a very nice property. We have this uh, isometric property, the binance property. You can arrange the directions so that the direction satisfies this identity. And in fact, using this information, Childish and Mantanidis prove the classification of the uh, integral one uh, five for the theorem, the geodesic net. That's why the triple junction will never happen. That's not why if you have quadruple junction, you just, you should, you should just cross because these two directions, they are just uh, opposite to each other. So this is a very nice application of uh, the electric uh, sine Gordon. So just in summary, if we use the sine Gordon, you get more information about the limiting process, uh, about the uh, limiting, uh, limiting interface. Uh, okay. So, so uh, the multiple entity solution for unitive sine Gordon are, are completely classified. And uh, in particular, the four entity solution are non-degenerate. Now using the four entity solutions, now we can construct solutions on, uh, on, on surfaces with this net. So let's take the uniquely sine Gordon equation on, uh, on, on the surfaces. Okay, and now suppose we have uh, a geodesic net with uh, n geodesics and they intersect at uh, with the k uh, uh, points. So and we we assume that only only two in, only two geodesic intersect. Okay, we and we <laughs> three geodesic intersect is more complicated. So we just uh, two uh, uh, intersect. And suppose it's non-degenerate. So uh so how do we define a non-degeneracy for geodesic net? This is also an interesting question and I'm going to uh, uh, explain uh, later. And then with this sign Gordon, uh, concentrating on the geodesic net, and we can compute explicitly the most index of geodesic net. The most index of geodesic net is the sum of this uh, L, this N geodesics, and plus the number of intersection points. Uh, so, so we have a, 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 a complete classification of, uh, of, uh, of the most index uh, of this solution. So we, under the non degenerate condition, uh, we can now have uh, existence and we have the most index. So this uh, most index uh, actually is the, uh, is partly conjectured by uh, Childish and uh, Mountain Lidis. So we gave uh, a proof of this uh, conjecture. Okay, so now let me explain what, so when, when geodesic net for crossing, when geodesic is a cross, how do we define the non-degeneracy? How do we desynchronize the, the, the geodesic net? So the, so, so the non-degeneracy of the geodesic uh, consists of Two paths. First, we want okay. Each each segment is non-degenerate. Okay, each segment is non-degenerate, and also the full uh, the geodesic itself is non-degenerate. So this is the this non-degeneracy of uh, the geodesic net. Now, with this non-degeneracy, uh, we can uh, perturb, okay. Uh, we can perturb the geodesic net. So we can perturb the cross and, and we can find a nearby uh, geodesic net. So uh, so this is this is how the non-degeneracy is used. Okay? So so next we compare the MOS index. So as we said, the MOS index consists, we found the MOS index is the the most the index of the geodesics plus the number of crossing, okay, the number of uh, crossing points, okay. Uh, 
So how do we compute the MOS index? So we need to study the, the nearest operator for the uh, for the uh, 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 for the for the nearest problem. And the most difficult part is to show the eigenvalues are actually small. Okay. Uh, the eigenvalues are if if it's a small, it must be like uh, Epsom water. Okay, it must be like uh, uh, Epsom water. So how do we show this? So, so in other words, the eigenvalues, uh, either you come from the index from the, from the geodesis, okay? This gives you all the one eigenvalues, or your eigenvalues will come from, if it's a small, and you will be at least, will be Epsom square water, okay? Will be Epsom square, water, and then this will come, this will give you the Jacquard field on each of the segment. So this is what uh, uh, we need to prove. And uh, to, prove, to prove that there's a special type of the eigenvalues between Epsom square and the order one, and, and what we, we, do, we do a blob, and we assume that uh, the, the eigenvalues is not, is larger than Epsom, and we do a blob, and what are we gonna see? Uh, if we blob at the crossing, you're gonna see the linear wise operator for the four ended solution. Now for the four ended solution, we know that it's non-degenerate. So we can write down, we know the uh, is a linear combination of translations. Now with this information, so how to go back and to the go back and uh, go back to the crossing and to go back to the crossing and uh, we, we use uh, this, uh, this uh, Jacquard field for the four ended solution. And we test the equation with the Jacquard field for the four ended solution. And uh, with, uh, with this uh, uh, testing, and you found that the beta must be Epsom order. So this is a non uh, computation. Okay. And, and so this is the, this is the part for a uh, geodesic net. Okay. Uh, 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 with, uh, so when the when the geodesic is crossing, and you're going to see uh, four entity solutions, and we use the four entity solution to desynchronize the geodesic net. Okay. So next, we want to consider uh, the the geodesic with higher multiplicity. Okay. So what happens when two geodesics they collapse? Okay. Uh, so in the limit the two geodesics will collapse, but, but at some place, uh, the, you're gonna see some special structure of the collapse. And this, this is this a special structure of the collapse that, that make that, that this make, make it, make it uh, uh, the finance most index, okay? So, so let's, Block at this special place and see what happens. What what is the uh, the equation governing this uh, this uh, 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 this touching? Okay, this this collapse. Okay. So 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 we so as in the geodesic net case. So now we block at the collapse. Okay, suppose it's collapse, and we block. And we blob at this place, and we're going to see what we're going to see is we're going to see a Jacobi total system. So let me just repeat: we have two uh, uh, geodesic clocks, and we look at the place where where the 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 close the closest point. Okay, we know that they cannot cross. Okay, because they cannot cross. So we look at uh, the place where they, they are the their closest point. At this place, at the closest point, and we block, and we're going to see a Jacobi total system. Okay. So what is a Jacobi total system? So Jacobi total system is uh, is the the is uh, equation uh, uh, governing the interaction. Uh, between different interfaces. And this is the Jacobi total system. 
So, uh, and if you uh, you have F F one, F one, F two, and F three. So these are the uh, graphs, uh, and so these graphs will solve the following uh, system of equations. And the left hand side is just the 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 uh, the Jacobi uh, uh, operator, right? It's nothing but just the Jacobi operator. And the right part, the right hand side, is inter interactions between the different layers. And the interaction between different layers are given by this exponential function. Okay, by this uh, exponential function. And and the the interaction is a, is of a total type. So that's why we call this a Jacobi and the total system, because the left hand side is the Jacobi operator, and the right hand side is the total system. Okay. So now this Jacobi total system has been first derived and used by uh, the Pino and uh, Michael Krasik and uh, myself and uh, and Young in 2012. And we, what we show that if this a square plus the Ricci is positive, then there are multiplicity two solutions. There are solutions with a higher multiplicity, with a, with a collapse. But the solution we construct has infinite more syntax. Unfortunately, uh, this solution has infinite more syntax. So, so the question still remains, uh, are there multiplicity two solutions with a bounded more index. So the solution, so the solution we construct in this paper has an infinite more index. Okay. And 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 but this is not the solution we want. The solution we want is is a solution with a final more index. So when they touch, they should only touch at at, at one point. Okay. So so, so this. The, this is the question we want to answer. So it turns out that if you want to have a multiple multiple two uh, interface solution with a bounded mass index, then you must have a Bunsen Jacobi field, and this is our new definition of a of a new type of a Jacobi field. So what is the Bunsen Jacobi field? And we take this Jacobi operator in our, in on surfaces. So this actually the R is just the Gauss curvature. Uh, U double prime plus plus R U. So a function can this function uh, defined under geodesics is called a Bunsen Jacobi field with k minimum points. If if at a, if uh, if uh, uh, away from this k minimum points, it satisfies the Jacobi equation. And we can fix the value at all these uh, uh, points that you could you could have one, and and the, the this is the most important condition. So when they jump, the slope they are the same. The absolute value of the slope they are the same. Okay. So so this is a uh, this this is uh, one example of a uh, bouncing Jacobi field. So this is one example of bouncing Jacobi field with seven interaction points. So you start with P1, you bounce um, to P2, right? And now P1 to P2 is a Jacobi field. And, and from P2 to P3 is Jacobi field and it bounce. And the slope from, from here, from bounce here under this slope, the absolute value should be the same. So when you jump, it's like when you jump, it, you, you should, uh, that uh, this should uh, uh, like a reflection. So this constant Jacobi field is like a reflection along the geodesics, uh, along the geodesics. Okay, so, so this is really, this is a very uh, 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 interesting related to the b -net problem uh, uh, in the dynamic system. Uh, it's, it's the b -net problem in dynamic systems. So you jump, from one point to another point, and you come back. Okay. So, okay. So our first result is that if you have a multiplicity two 
if a solution with a uh, higher multi, uh, with a uh, multiplicity two interface and the bounded MOS index, then this uh, uh, ja this uh, geodesics must have a bound function Jacobian field. So a necessary condition for the existence of of uh, multiplicity of uh, multiplicity two interface is a bunsen jacquard field. You must have a bunsen jacquard field to have a multiplicity two interface. So this is the first result. In fact, this result we uh, uh, so so the proof of this result is quite a is quite a complicated uh, 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 to. Uh, so what you show that uh, uh, the, 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 the normalized equation will solve a Jacquard field equation with uh, a point of singularity on the right-hand side. And this point of singularity are, must be all the same. Okay? So, so this is the, the, uh, the, the, the necessary condition for the Jung function Jacquard field. So the next question is, suppose uh, we have a function Jacquard field, uh, can we construct a multiplicity two solution? Okay, and uh, and uh, and uh, and the answer is yes. So the result is let L be a geodesic uh, with a total length two pi. Okay, uh, we can normalize the length. Let n be a fixed integer. And uh, suppose L has a bouncing Jacobian field with n minimum points as the index k. Then for you some small the Arnkind equation, we have Arnkind equation with with uh, energy like with uh, with uh, will be uh, uh, multiplicity two, so it's two times two, so you get you get a four pi e, and uh, and the most index will be m plus k, and uh, and n is the number of uh, Bunsen Jacquard number of uh, Bunsen points, and uh, k is the index of the Jacquard field. Now, provided that uh, the bouncing Jacobian field is non-degenerate. So, uh, what is uh, yeah. the two, min two minutes? Yeah. Two, okay. Two, yeah. Two. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I will finish in two minutes. So, so what is the uh, 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 so the the existence of. Uh, of a bouncing Jacquard field, and we can prove under some conditions on the on the Gauss curvature. For example, if the Gauss curvature is small, then we can prove that uh, that there's a there's a bouncing Jacquard field with exactly n points. And to prove this, we use the variation method uh, instead of the dynamic system method. Okay. So uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so what is the non degeneracy of a bunsen Jacquard field? So we have to linearize around the, the, the bunsen Jacquard field. And we say that the bunsen Jacquard field with uh, uh, k minimum points are, is a non-degenerate. If the following system, uh, the following uh, system uh, has only trivial solution, okay? has only trivial solution. So, and, and how do we derive how we derive the non degeneracy of a bunsen Jacquard field. And the reason is our the existence of bunsen Jacquard field is, is a sort of like an over determinant problem. And so we, and there's a vibration structure for the, for the, the vibration structure for the bunsen Jacquard field is, is, uh, is an over determinant problem. And, uh, and uh, and then we do uh, a second variation of this over term problem, and we get uh, this uh, non degeneracy. So uh, with this non degeneracy, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, then we can construct the solutions with uh, multiplicity with the multiplicity tool. Okay. Uh, so let me summarize what I have talked about today. Is uh, is uh, is the classification or integral one variable volt and uh, for the Anakan equation for particular Anakan equation with this uh, elliptic uh, with the sine Gordon, and uh, and uh, by the result of a Charles and uh, Mantelitis, 
and we know that the, the limit is either a geodesic net, okay, or multiplicity. And so in this talk, and we classified, we constructed the, the geodesic net, solutions with geodesic net uh, by four engine solutions, and we compute the Mohr index of the geodesic net solution. And then in the second part, I discuss how we construct solutions with multiplicity tool, and we use the Jacobi total and we use the Bunsen Jacobi field to construct the solutions with a multiple tool uh, interface. And uh, I think that's, that's the end of my talk. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you for your talk. And uh, uh, are there any questions uh, in the room? Okay, and uh, in the internet? Uh, in fact, um, I have a question. Mm, uh, uh, it is a bit strange. Uh, could you explain uh, uh, what is the difference between Alain Khan and Saint Gardon in this uh, relation? Because uh, uh, both uh, have uh, uh, explicit uh, 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 solutions which are used uh, uh, to provide uh, uh, for Saint Gardon, they are used to provide uh, uh, multi end uh, solutions uh, and so on. Uh, what is the problem in Alan Khan in this sense? Uh, okay, uh, yeah, this, is a, this is a very nice and a nice question. And the reason is uh, for Alan Khan, this is not an integral system. Okay, so uh, we cannot write on the solution explicitly. And why for uniquely sign Gordon, and we can write on the solution explicitly, and these are all solutions. And, and so that's the difference. Uh, so, so it cannot uh, be classified uh, in general for Alan Khan, yes? uh, Well, for Alan Khan, we can only classify four ended solutions. Ah, okay. there's, there's some classification for when n equals two, which is four, four n solutions. But in general, it's very difficult. But for the sign Gordon, we can classify all two n and the solutions. Okay, thank you. We have a complete classification for- Well, uh, so- uh, for, 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 uh, for sign Gordon. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks again. Yeah, and uh, we have.